Wikipedia, which is the biggest project of, of this world, is edited, maintained by volunteers. So that much is in people's mind. So volunteers, just to give a figure, we probably are, it's, we're not so numerous, we're probably 100,000 worldwide. Oh, so that's, that's quite a few people. That's quite a few people. But when you compare to the number of readers, that's actually not much. We're still roughly in the top five of websites most visited in the world. So 100,000 is not so much in comparison to the number of readers we have, but it's quite a few people. So roughly we have Wikipedia, which is the most well-known project, and we have others Slightly less known, but Wikidata might ring a bell to some people. It's structured data and uh, Wikimedia Commons for media object. So altogether, this about 15 projects so far represent what we call the Wikimedia projects. And then we gave a second name, which is the Wikimedia ecosystem. That's a mix of the project, all the volunteers, and also a collection of organizations which were created over time to support the movement. And that's the thing that most people don't know, don't realize, is that we have organization, in spite of having many as volunteers, they do not come out of the blue. They do not coordinate magically. We have organizations supporting that. And the first organization were created two years after the creation of Wikipedia. So Wikipedia just turned 23 years old. We also created a few new chapters, and there was one in Wikimedia in France called Wikimedia France, and I was one of the founder of Wikimedia France. Little by little, we added some more. So usually it's based by country. So you might have Wikimedia Dutchland, Wikimedia Netherlands, and so on. We have some of them are quite evolved with staff and budget, and uh, some of them have no staff and a tinier budget, and some of them don't even have a legal structure. It's more a group of individuals coordinating, doing things in their place. So just to give you a figure, we currently have one big foundation, Wikimedia Foundation. So that's the mothership. And we have 38 chapters and over 140 smaller entities. So Wikipedia in Residence is something we created over time. Most people are volunteers in that whole frame. And then we have some people, staff of, uh, of the entities, of some of the bigger entities. And then over time, we got some increasing number of relationships with, in particular, museum, archives, libraries, university, non-governmental agencies. And those wanted to have a special relationship to some very expert Wikipedia so that they could build partnership, exchange data, understand licenses. What could we do together? And to do that, they usually uh, recruit, identify people we call Wikipedia in residence. Those are people who are going to be a sort of a go-between between between the Wikipedia community and this partner. And they will know both worlds and they will try to create some bonding there. So those people, we call them the Wikipedia in residence because they are in residence in another entity. I am a Wikipedia in residence at WIPO. That's the World Intellectual Property Organization. So that's a UN agency. And I have been uh, working with them for the past two years, and I'm entering my third year with them, yeah, to try to get some stuff done together. We did a lot of teaching, a lot of training conferences. I did that as a lot as well. Training teachers to explain them how the system is working. So, for ah. example, Wikimedia France is certified by the government, by the education, uh, national education system. Certified train- as, a, as what? As an uh, educational... It's recognized as a partner of the French education system. So most of the content about Africa was actually written by people from Europe and North America. So it was all wrong. A typical example was when you were looking at the pictures. Most of the pictures were pictures taken by tourists for the safari. So they brought back some pictures of, uh, you know, lions and sunsets and such. So I thought, no, nah, it cannot go on this way. Um we said we wanted to bring the entire knowledge to the entire uh, humanity, but the entire knowledge, we are missing a lot here. And most of the content about Africa was not yet even on the internet. So I decided to make that change. And I've been focusing on that for the past 10 years now. When we do a program in a, in a school with the primary kids, like participating to a, a writing drive, which is called Wiki Challenge African Schools, the idea is we bring them some tablets, 
some blackboards, uh, a contest, some tools. And for the first time, they are still not connected to the internet, but at least they learn digital stuff. They mm -hmm. learn how to type, they learn screens. So it's an entire different situation from another school where they don't have this material. How will that make a difference for these kids to have been confronted to this material maybe two years, three years, four years than the other kids in the country? Will that make a difference? Will they be better educated, more uh, willing to jump in the big bath? I, I don't know. We, we don't have really measures of that. That would be awesome. The new mission statement is so that Wikimedia would become the essential infrastructure to support the open source, the open knowledge movement. So it's a much larger mission statement where we voluntarily decide to not only support our project, but to support the general ecosystem. So being more involved in advocacy, more supportive of other programs that are not our programs, trying to protect somehow a sort of family related area. It was difficult for us to move to the video because working together on a video is much more complicated than working on a text. In terms of production, of review, of update, it's complicated. And we started getting slow, delayed on the tech part because we were still on our old interface with the text while people were moving to Facebook and all those things, which were more fluid in terms of uh, user experience. Three minutes yeah. is even quite long. So they want something super social just here on their desk. Compare that to reading a long Wikipedia article. We still need that. We need the in-depth information. But for many people, they also want this little thing very quickly. Most of the AI are being trained using Wikipedia. So they need our stuff to be there and to be relevant and to be up to date. And they have the right to use it to train the model. But as soon as the people consume only from the AI, they will not see that info come actually in big part from Wikipedia and they will not come to the website. So it will be less recognized as the source of info. So less participants and less visitors, less donors. Early 2023, I think it was, uh, we have some offline versions of Wikipedia that people can download on their computer. The highest number of download was in Russia. People were downloading like crazy, thinking this is going to be banned or something. Those are short-term things, but you can see that there are countries who are explicitly creating some sort of a closed internet network in their country. Yes. So how do we reach out to these people? How do we resist that? In some countries, reading Wikipedia is dangerous. In some countries, editing Wikipedia is very, very dangerous because it goes against what is legal in the country. If I had a recommendation, is any organization that has relevant data that they can share and that they can put in the open so that we can reuse them to build up our articles, to build up graphs, to build up images or videos even, think about sharing them. We're not mm -hmm. necessarily asking for the reports, though available would be nice, but at least if you could share your data so that we could actually write uh, these uh, high impact articles, climate change or any topic of interest for the future. But that that's that's a collective work. We do mm -hmm. not produce data. We use data produced by others or recorded by others. And if we don't know this data, if it's hidden, if it's not findable, we cannot use that. Mm -hmm. So a please, a plea, <laughs> help us do our job by making yours. If you have data, share your data with others. For more from this interview, subscribe to Imaginize World on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts.